Hello, welcome to Bob's Dungeon. My name's Bob, I'll be your host. A question that has boggled the mind of most people that run games in the past has been the question of character balance. The balance between the different characters and options that players have for their characters. It seems to be a bigger question these days than it used to be, but it's always kind of been there. If character balance is really important to you, then you probably would give a pass to the game I'm going to talk about in this video, because the game I'm going to talk about is notorious for being unbalanced, and that game is Rifts. This book has 256 pages, and this is the 13th printing of this book, which gives it a copyright of 2000. It was published by Palladium Games. All of the artwork in this book is in black and white, with a few color page inserts. So let's go ahead and look at that artwork. This is the first picture we see when we first open the book. All of the artwork in this book is in black and white, except for a few full color inserts. And boy are the full color inserts really nice to look at. But for the most part, it is all in black and white. And all of the artwork goes a long way to setting the tone and mood for this game. And I have included this picture of a vampire because you can never go wrong with a cybernetic vampire armed with a laser. To play this game, what you're going to want is a copy of this core rule book and a full set of dice. A full set of dice containing a 20-sided die, a 12-sided die, preferably two 10-sided dice for rolling both percentiles and tens, an 8-sided die, a 6-sided die, and a 4-sided die. So let's go ahead and look at character creation for this game. Character creation is pretty standard in this game for all Palladium books. First, you figure up your attributes. And there are eight attributes. And they are intelligent, quote, mental endurance, mental aff affinity, physical strength, physical prowess, physical endurance, physical beauty, and speed. And the way you figure these attributes up is you roll four six-sided dice and add the three highest dice together. If your total is a 16, a 17, or an 18, then you get to add the fourth die to the roll, which means if you got a high attribute, you got a pretty good attribute. So anyway, after you figure up your attributes, you'll figure up your hit points. Your hit points, pretty simple to figure up. You take your physical endurance and add it to a D6 roll. And then for each level you gain, regardless of what class you choose, you get another D6 to add to your hit points. You also have SDC, which is Structural Damage Capacity. And these are things like your light damage, your cuts, bruises, abrasions. And once they're all gone, you start doing damage to the hit points, which is your real damage. Your internal bleeding, your broken bones, stuff like that. And your SDC doesn't change once you figure it up at character creation. And... The way you figure it up is all the practitioners of magic, the scholars and the adventurers, they get 46 for their starting SDC. Your psychic R RCCs, which is racial character class, gets a 3D6 for their SDC. And all of your men at arms classes get a 1D4 times 10 plus class bonus for their SDC. Then you have dra the Dragon RCC, and they don't get SDC. They get, instead, 
MDC, which is Mega Damage Capacity. And Mega Damage in this game equal is equal to 100 points of SDC. But normal weapons can do no damage to a Mega Damage creature or vehicle. Instead, you have to have a weapon specifically designed to do Mega Damage in order to hurt them. Otherwise, they don't take no damage. Which is kind of cool. It also shows you how unbalanced this game is starting out of the gate. So, anyway, after you figure those out, you will figure out whether your character is psychic or not. And there are a couple of ways to do this. The first is you can choose one of the psychic character classes, which the character classes in this game are referred to as OCCs, Occupational Character Class. And if you choose one of the psychic classes, then of course you got psychic abilities. If not, you're going to and decide you want to be one of the other OCCs, then you get a, to make a percentile roll. And this percentile roll will tell you whether you have minor psychic abilities, major psychic abilities, or no psychic abilities. And, I mean, it just depends on whether you want to be psychic or not, whether you want to include that role or not. But anyway, after you figure out your psionics, you will figure out your character's PPE, which is Potential Psychic Energy. And whether your character is psychic or not, all characters have some PPE. And you roll a 2d6 to determine how much PPE you have. Now, why would a character that has no psychic powers have PPE? It's simple. In order to cast magic, a character has to spend a certain amount of PPE. And some of the spells require quite a bit of PPE. And so magic users that don't have enough PPE, which they get extra PPE because of their classes, but for those that don't have enough PPE to cast a certain spell, they can actually sacrifice others in order to harvest their PPE to cast their spells. They can also tap into Ley Lines and Nexus Points to harvest more PPE. So everybody's got some, even if they can't use it. That's just the way it is. After you get that figured up, you'll want to pick an alignment. And the alignments in this game vary from what you would find in Dungeons & Dragons. They don't have a neutral alignment. This game system doesn't believe in the neutral alignment. Instead, they have the selfish alignment. But anyway, you have the good alignments, which are principled and scrupulous. You have the selfish alignments, which are unprincipled and anarchist. Then you have the evil alignments, which are miscreant, aberrant, and diabolic. Now, don't let the evil alignment fool you. You can still be a good character and be of an evil alignment. The Some of the games I've seen Palladium put out give examples of characters in movies and books that have the different alignments presented in the game and the aberrant alignment has examples such as Han Solo and Casey Jones in it. Those guys are definitely not villains. So there's that to keep in mind. After that you'll want to pick your OCC, your occupational character class. And it's broken up into several groups and there are a lot of classes in this game and in the supplements they have even more classes they try to give you more classes with each supplement for this game which is kind of cool gives you a lot that you can do but the classes presented in this book are the men-at-arms which consist of Borgs crazies cyber knights glitter boys juicers headhunters Coalition Grunt, the Coalition Military Specialist, the Coalition RPA Elite RSAM, and the Coalition Technical Officer. After, and then after that, 
there are the scholars and adventurers, which consist of body fixers, city rats, cyberdocs, operators, rogue scholars, rogue scientists, vagabonds, and wilderness scout. Then you have your practitioners of magic, which are your line walkers, your techno wizards, your shifters, and your mystics. Then you have RCCs, which stands for racial character classes. And these are characters that are both classes and a different race altogether. And there's your psychic RCCs, which consists of the bursters, the coalition dog pack, the psy stalkers, and the mind melters. Then you have your dragons which is self-explanatory. You can play a dragon in this game as a player character, which shows you again how much this game is a little bit unbalanced, which I don't mind so much. It gives it a lot of weirdness. But anyway, it doesn't end there. This game is designed in its story so that you can take any game Palladium puts out, be it Heroes Unlimited, Beyond the Supernatural, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ninjas and Super Spies, Dead Rain, doesn't matter. You can make a character for one of those games and plop it right into this game with little to no alteration whatsoever. And that's that's pretty cool. That gives it a, just so much you can be in this game, so much you can do. The... The psychics in this game, as well as their PPE, they have what's called ISP, Inner Strength Points. And Inner Strength Points are spent like magic users spend their PPE to use their abilities. Which is kind of confusing, but you get used to it after a bit. And that's, that's pretty much character creation. You get some starting funds and buy equipment and stuff and every OCC in this game gives you your starting skill packages skills in this game are done with the percentile and you get a bunch of different skills for each class and the max that you have in a skill is 98% and they consider the 2% as that there's always room for a failure which is kind of nifty. The skills in this game, that's something that a lot of people have trouble with with this game because character creation really doesn't take that long, but figuring up the percentages for all your skills takes a bit of time. So it's not unheard of for character creation to go on for an hour or so sometimes, depending on how good you are at making up a character for this game. And then there's the balance issues that people don't like. And those things don't bother me that much. But anyway, this game gives you a look at the world of Rifts. And it's basically our world set in the future. And a bunch of portals have opened up because of an apocalyptic event. It doesn't necessarily say what that event is. It could have been nuclear war. It could have been a big comet smashing into us. It doesn't actually say, but it does tell the effects that come after the event and the state of the world as it is presented in this book and how because of all the death that occurred, all these portals opened up. You have creatures pouring in from other planets and other dimensions and everything else and Atlantis has reappeared and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And... It gives you the whole thing gives you a big clash between technology and magic, technology and magic working together, mutants, aliens, demons, everything. This book literally has everything. Right, this game. But it gives you the details on how combat works, the rules for running the game, setting the tone and the mood. 
gives you some a few key locations in North America that you can visit. And there are expansion books that detail other lands. And there's a section here that have a few examples of different aliens and DBs, dimensional beings. And there's a big section on equipment, all kinds of mecha, robots, cybernetic implants, guns, melee weapons, equipment, you name it, it's got it. And it, it's a lot of bang for your buck in this book. But anyway, it's got everything you need to play and run the game. Which brings me to three questions. Would I play a character in this game? Absolutely. I like the Palladium system. I especially like Rifts. And I like running and playing in a post-apocalypto games. Would I run this game? Again, yes I would. I like the post-apocalypto thing in it. I love the fact that anything you can think of, you can have happen in this game. Which is kind of nifty. Would I recommend this game? I would recommend it because I enjoy this game. If you're really into player character balance, then this is definitely not a game for you. Because this game is extremely unbalanced. And that's just how it is. And that's pretty much all I got to say about it. Thank you for joining me at this look at Rifts. And hopefully you'll join me next time where we'll talk about something else. Bye.